Hey, what's going on, everybody? Happy Sunday, happy Sunday. Just get everyone on stream here. Live now. Do, 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 do. What's going on, everyone? Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Give everyone about 30 seconds to a minute here to come on through. Really, really excited for this session. So hopefully everyone's got pen and paper, some laptop ready to go. It's going to be awesome. Everyone's having a nice weekend. We'll get started here shortly. What's going on? FIR5, how are you? Cattle fever, what's going on? How are you? Happy Sunday. Looking forward to a really good session. B, how are you? Michael Hodge, Mike, what's going on? Thanks for joining, guys. Very excited for this session. Tons of tons of uh, tons of tons of charting today. I uh, spent about two three hours doing some work this morning. Um, tons of things going on out there. So I think it's it's important to sort of focus on a on a set niche group and sort of go from there. So very excited. A little bit of everything today: day trading, swing trading, all technicals, some start, some setups, some dividend stuff, um, some China stuff to look at. So it's going to be exciting. Looking forward to this session. Prep time probably about. 40 minutes, guys, 40, 45 minutes or so, and we'll run through everything today. Hopefully, everyone's been having a, a couple of good, interesting trading weeks. The markets have been uh, been pretty crazy, so we'll chat through all that. Blade Runner, what's going on? Sean, how are you? Thanks for joining. Uh, give everyone a couple minutes here to come through. We've got about 40 viewers just started, so let we'll everyone hop on, and then we'll get started. Justin, how are you? Thanks for coming. Anchor. Oh, any no no problem. I love doing these study sessions. So, you know, we've gotten thousands of uh, positive feedback over the years doing these. So, um, we're gonna keep doing them. I try to do them about once a month when when there's sort of updates and and changes in technical areas to 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 sort of cover. So, um, so heal. What's going on? Awesome. Give everyone a couple more minutes. This is a free session. So, went through. Um, Doing it on social as well. So give everyone the other on Weeble, Stock Twits, and other areas to come through. And we will get started. Jonathan, what's going on? Awesome. Yep, yep. Awesome. So I'm going to get started here. Uh, 50 viewers here. We'll wait till maybe you get 100, 200. We'll figure that out. Hopefully it's a good session. Haven't had one in a while. Um, but I'll sort of jump into it. Uh, my name's Spud from Spud Zone. You guys probably all know me who've been following me for, for over the years. Um, going through some awesome topics today. Uh, so today we're going to cover SPY QQQ to the indexes. Quick technical update. Um, we sort of sort of in that pattern broke out of some ranges on Friday. You saw with the sort of algo explosion on Friday. Tons of buying all over the place. Uh, if you keep an eye out, actually five to seven of the names have been bringing us up over the year sort of stalled out. Everyone was looking for other opportunities, cheaper areas to sort of buy the market. Um, so we got a lot of bids early on throughout the day and it sort of just held on. Price action was pretty strong. Tape was good and we ended up closing strong. But here we are, gonna jump into it guys. So SP 500, quick you know, update all the technicals for you guys. We've, we've had these sessions over the past year, right? Um, we've been in that bear market downtrend and basically broke through after this, right? So every top has been sold off all the way down for about a year, year and a half now, right? These orange boxes, we every orange box we've went through this TA, right? We finally got down in here. We start to build out some higher lows, a little bottoming forming here back in um, August, uh, let's see, July, August last year. We're now above those levels, sort of breaking out. And this was a key break for me. I've been saying that 420 spot, uh, I know you've probably been hearing it from a ton of folks, but we've been saying this for about six to 10 months. That 420 spot was key. Uh, and so we had a volume push out on Thursday, Friday, and this past week over that level. You know, does the market stop here, do a full media U-turn, uh, and then maybe go retest 400 again, maybe 380 potentially? Uh, but right now we're sort of getting into that gap phase. And this is where we had some heavy downside volume back in early 2022, uh, mid-2022, excuse me. Uh, and that next level, right? And we could get that, I'm, you know, as a trader, right, we're always looking about blow-off tops, washouts. This is setting up for a potential blow-off top here. 
Um, if we continue to see strong price action, we could see 430s, 440s. This is a major resistance here at around the 440s. So if you get into that 440s level, we have multiple weekly, and this is all weekly, right? So this is bigger time frame, right? This isn't daily, this isn't five minutes, not one hour chart for all you folks who trade the ODTEs, the one minute, two minute, three minute, whatever you're trading. This is a bigger picture sort of time frame. A lot of traders on the street, this is what they're using, right? They're using the MAs, they're using the, the larger time frame windows, right? So we're above this purple trend line for me, right? This is my, all my analysis that I'm looking through. We started to see some heavy selling in here. So I think if we get into this area, we're going to be in sort of some trouble in terms of, and what I mean by trouble is, you know, there's a ton of money still short, right? And so if you could get in this level, you get a folks feeling uncomfortable in here. Once you get in here, I mean, you're not really far from all time highs, which is pretty incredible to think about what we've been through in the past year. And we're literally almost sort of regaining all of those losses of 2022, if not have gotten up almost above there. And so this level here, and what I what, what I refrain to as a blow off top is you see this wick here on the weekly. Uh, it looks like April first of 2022. We had the, when you see a wick sort of get fully sold off down, and it's basically a small little nudge, right? That means there was a lot of pressure in there, right? Same thing here. There was a wick sold off. So that 440s is really just a, a blow off top spot. So if we somehow squeeze there two, three, four percent higher. That would be an awesome opportunity to scale out longs, potentially then take a risk versus reward to a downside, maybe some put protection for September, October timeframe. If we get in that zone, I'll be buying probably that September, October put protection, maybe at the 420, 430 strike, if we were to get in those 440s, because I think the risk versus reward from downside from there, um, those could pay out if we get a nice 5, 10% market pullback, right? Anyone who bought in here is up huge, having record years, right? You'd probably be up 20, 30% if you bought these dips down in here. And that's just index alone coverage, right? Um, but it's funny because underneath the skin here, we're, we're only really seeing five to seven stocks. A lot of the AI hype, the momentum, we've seen that sort of go nuts in parabolic to the upside while 90% of the equal weight S&P really hasn't done anything. Uh, it's been flat slash red on the year. So now you're sort of seeing everyone's sidelines, tons of cash on the sidelines, right? You're now seeing folks say, I need to get involved in this rally. What can I buy that looks kind of cheap? What can I buy that maybe fits my criteria? And so that's what you saw Friday. We saw that big pop with the weekly candle here. If you want to look at the quick daily on SPY, we broke out here as well. Same tenant, uh, same resistant level. My line is still here. Uh, we broke through that. And that is why you saw the rally. This line I've had for six months, right? This has been a resistance pop. No surprise on Friday that... Every technical indicator was shooting to the upside. It was an, I think, 80%, 90% up day all day long. And we just absolutely rocketed all day long. Um, so are we in, are we starting to get into the sort of scary levels? Yes, if you're long. Um, but as I said, momentum right now is fully on the long side. We're now in that sort of gap. Look at this big gap. We've been trading in a really tight trading range, 380 to 420 for about eight months now. And we finally broke through that. So now you're going to have new technical traders start to come in and say, I'm more bullish than I've ever been. And they're going to play around in this range level, right? When you get to the top end of the upper band, as I said, the 440s, that is where I think your blow off top could occur. Anywhere 440s could be a nice risk versus reward for 430s, 420s, immediate pullback. Um, but we're in this level where, you know, pretty bullish. Uh, let's look at the QQQ because that has been way more range uh, in terms of uh, range bound. I mean, we fully broke out. QQQ, if you want to see this, guys, we had broke off all time highs, right? Retest here. It actually, my, ver my vertical line here, my extension, we have pivoted every single time we've rallied to the penny, to the penny, right? Just pivoted. Back in January, we fully broke out of that. Once we broke out of that 290 range in the QQQ, all of this upside, right, from here, one top, two top, three top, four, then we had a full-on breakout. All of this percentage gain was after we broke out of the downtrend, which is the peak here, which is that 290 piece. We talked about that. QQQ was in the biggest downtrend until it broke out of that 290. Now we're in here. But okay, now you're like, Spud, where can we go from here? Well, let's look at the technicals. What is the price action telling us, right? Everything I trade, everything I look for is price action. What is the money telling you? What is the money showing you? That is what price action, right? As I always like to say, price action dictates market movements, right? We don't need a hope. We don't need a guess. We don't need to think about things. Just look at the action, see where things are going. Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it a strong base? Is it is it a weak base? Is things you know flying to the downside or are we moving, gearing up for a higher move? 
So let's look at the QQQ. We go back to the daily chart here. I'm going to switch to the weekly just a little bit cleaner. Um, I have my lines here. I've had them for six to eight months. They haven't changed. They just sit here at resistance and supports. We are in the gap. QQQ has been in the gap. People were trying to short the 330. They got blown out. People are trying to short the 350. Will they get blown out? I don't know. Will we pivot at 350 and go back to 330? Maybe. But you are in the gap. Technicals say that this move can continue possibly up to my extension line. My extension line is at the 360, 359, 361 level. That is where I'd look to potentially, same play as the SPY, look to be a seller for profits on longs because everyone who bought the dip longs is now up, you know, 20, 30% on the year, which is astronomical gains, right? It sometimes takes years to make those gains. You're now made that in six months, right? So you have to think about how drastic some of the moves to the upside have been, right? So this extension line, the 360 line, another thing, you get a blow off top in the 360s, you're pretty close to the all-time highs. I mean, then you're only 10% off. I mean, that's crazy to think about everything that we've seen. Rates have quadrupled and we're here and we're almost at all time highs. It, it, it doesn't make sense rationally, right? But the price action does make sense for what's going on. Does it make sense? No, everyone's bearish. You know, no one, can, no one thinks the market can continue to rally, right? Airports are packed, flights are sold out and hotels are going nuts. But, you know, everyone's still spending millions of dollars. So, you know, until that stops, until the unemployment starts to, you know, go up and tick up, I think... The rally can continue to cause some really big headaches for shorts here uh, and for everyone who's underexposed. So I think your rally, you got a major resistance on the Qs in the 360s. That's where I think the pain is to the upside. I think that is where you could get your blow off to the 360s. Once again, I'd be looking for some maybe put protection if I hit the 360s. That is where you might get a nice quick 5%, 10% swift pullback in those 360s range. And this might not take a day or a week or a month. Uh, this could take, you know, three, four, five months to pull back. But that is from a technical standpoint, from a trader's perspective, that's the risk to the upside is these 360s area, right where the extension hits the horizontal pivot. And that's where I think you could potentially see a stall at the minimum, at least from the from the momentum we've seen, a stall. I'm not saying it could easily pull back here. I'm just looking at the technicals. That is where you may see some overhead sort of, you know, why isn't the market moving any more higher? Because you know, we sort of hit that algo point, right? So keep an eye on that level. Those are the indexes. That's our quick coverage. I go. I try to go through those about um, every couple of months to just give you an understanding of, of a bigger time frame where we are at in the market cycle. Right? We everyone's been bearish for six to eight months, and we've only been going higher. But you know, where is the top? Where it's hard to call tops, but we have technicals to help us out on where bottoms are, where tops are, etc. So for me, it's all technicals. Okay. Hopefully that's helpful. So get your sort of. My numbers I have in my head are the SPY 440s blowout and a QQQ 360s blowout. That is where I look to maybe grab some put exposure. Um, okay, cool. Quick uh, other name for people that are starting to get all bulled up. Um, you're going to see stuff to start to move that's sort of in that spec place. Um, ARC has been consolidating in the same areas, actually being sort of forming a bottom base um, in the 30s to 40s. And we're slowly starting to see the sell pressure decrease while we're slowly starting to see some buy pressure. A lot of charts here. It's been traded pretty tight. I don't necessarily love the ARC range. This is the Kathy Woods uh, flagship fund, guys, for those that don't know. A lot of high beta tech names. Not great in this sort of environment where cash becomes very expensive. But let's look at a trading person. Uh, let's look at a trading setup here. Um, we have a lot of consolidation on the weekly chart. We're sort of breaking through this trend line of 40-41 zone. Upside is potentially limited on the shorter time frame. What I mean by that is there could be a potential double, triple top here, 43, 45, 44 a share, which is roughly about a 6 7% move up, which would be pretty nice, right, from a short-term trading mindset. You start to break out over 44, 45, that is where there's some big headache for short sides because once you break 44, 45, there's an immediate gap to the 50 range. You see this candle, this big red wick? That is where some major sell pressure hit. On a weekly candle, we drop 14%. So you start to get above that 45 trend line right here. You break out of here. This is a what I call a pre-breakout watch from a technical level. So ARC will be on watch the next couple of weeks because of where it's trading. You see how it sort of wants to maybe break out into here? A similar chart on Intel we talked about, right? It's It reminds me of the Intel chart at $25 a share. It sort of bottomed, it rejected, it bottomed, it made a higher low, and then bang, Intel broke out into the 30s from 25. It's, you know, a 10, 20, 
10, 20, 25% interval move. That's a big band move, right? So upper level band on ARC right here would be about 50. You have a double top here. This would create a triple top. Um, but I, as I mentioned, the key break on ARC, and this is a speculative, obviously, ETF. It's Kathy Wood's flagship. You break out of this 45 level, we have a nice gap to fill in here. A lot of traders are going to be watching this one over the coming weeks. So don't miss out if this one starts to move. Just know your levels. If it breaks certain levels, this thing can move fast. It trades off the technicals as well. It's a momentum name. It's very cheap, down 60% on the year. Um, it can move if people start to bottom fish. So keep an eye on ARC. That is the ARC index, the ARC Kathy Woods flagship fund. That's topic one. Topic two today, we have a bunch of different topics to cover. For those that like the longer term, stress free, you know, more stress free, larger time frame picture, uh, sort of the safer, longer, you know, swing trades that have worked in the past couple of decades. I have a few names for us to check a look at. Some of these are dirt cheap when it comes to PE. Their cheapest PE is they've been in over a decade. I'm going to look through some of these. And what they also have some of them in common is huge dividends as of now. Um, so I'm going to talk through those. That's going to be topic number two. We're going to dissect these charts because I think there's going to be some really good trading opportunities on some of these. Third topic for today is going to be China mega cap tech. Only a couple names along with the K-Web index. We're going to talk through that quickly. China names are relatively extremely cheap and have fully underperformed the market for almost two years now, while U.S. mega cap tech is almost, almost all of them are at all-time highs, if not going close to them. Apple, Microsoft, uh, NVIDIA uh, can continue on some of those names, right? And China has been just decimated. Uh, tons of shorts there as well. Those names could have some risk to the upside. We've seen some huge whale call sleepers. Going to talk through some of those names. And then the last bit is I'm going to talk through some spec stuff. Uh, so some speculative names, some speculative AI names of big volumes that have performed well the last couple of weeks, they're continued. This is week number four. I've been watching two names, in three names in particular. I'm going to talk through those three AI names. I know a lot of that's a buzzword right now, but I'm talking three that have been really good price action that you must have on your radar for the coming weeks because they've been printing gains every week. They've been in buy mode, algo mode, and you're going to see these charts and you're going to say, wow, the price action looks great. So I'm going to be watching dips on some of these names. Um, and I'm going to be continued watches. So we have three more topics left for today. Hopefully it's all going well so far. Drop something in the comments. It looks like we got about 100 live right now. You guys are crushing in the comments. This is great. Good stuff. Um, after the session, definitely feel, uh, you know, feel free to put some feedback on there because these charts are going to be awesome. When you guys start to look at these, you know, I haven't been this excited over a study session in probably six months. Um, so, so just get ready here because there's some really good stuff to look at. Let's jump into topic number two. We're going to look through dividend names and dividend TA, okay? First name, AT&T. Many obviously probably use this service or maybe don't know much about the financials or company, but let's look at the chart. It is the chart. I'm going to be frank and I'm going to be quite obvious. Um, sellers have crushed this thing. This thing, this chart looks absolutely broken. It's broken. Um, it reminds me of Intel when every single person was talking poorly on it and the sellers were just smashing this name. Um, it it kind of reminds me of that. Let's look at AT&T. First off, if you don't know, AT&T and Verizon are two of the biggest dividend players within all of the markets. AT&T offers an annual dividend of over 7.3%, uh, 7 which means if you put a certain you know, you put capital into AT&T no matter what the share price does on the year you make 7.3% as of today of course if they didn't cut a dividend in the future or whatever right as of tomorrow as of today 7.3% right you sit in treasury yields which is where I've been for most of the last year and a half I'm getting about 4.4% on my cash right so I'm just keeping up with inflation right you have a, a name like AT&T that's offering you 7% yield. Now, that might just be super attractive for everyone that thinks we're going to go into a recession. You get immediate 7%. That's great. But guess what? Now let's look at the AT&T chart because we are almost at 10-year lows on this chart. Now, keep in mind, we're coming down to a really key support. 2011, in September of 2011 and February of 2011, AT&T had a stock share price of about $14 a share. Where are we today? At 15, right? Where did we bounce off of earlier in uh, October of last year? We bounced off of 14, 1460, right? We're getting there. We're pretty close. Now, AT&T bounced really hard at 14. You had about a 22% interval move in two weeks off this 1460 level. 
Is it crazy that it bounced almost twenty, uh, almost 25% in two weeks from that level? No. Why? Let's go back and look what happened in 2011. That is where the support was before it made its move up to 20, right? Over a year period, it made a move from 15, 14 to 20, right? So now we're hitting those levels again 10 years later. Uh, not even 12 years later, we're back coming back down to that support band. This is going to be a really key level for this stock. If we can't all 1460s, I put in another range gap. Um, this name sort of reminds me of uh, Meta. Meta started getting blown out. I mean, it was 10-year lows. No one wanted it in the 90s. No one wanted it at $100 a share. But now everyone wants it at what? What is it at now? Just for a quick example, right? I want to look, com just compare the charts when it was broken. This chart was broken. What happened? No one wanted it at $90 a share. But now every analyst wants it at $190, $200. Now everyone's buying it at $200 a share, but no one wanted it at $90. You know, this is obviously a growth tech name, a little bit different. AT&T does not trade like that per se. It's a dividend name. It's slow growth. P is very low. Um, but as I said, right, if you can collect a 7% dividend on this name and then maybe get a 5, 10, 15% equity performance, all of a sudden you have a 20% move on your capital. So I'm going to be watching this as a trade idea. How I potentially would play this is I'm going to be looking this as maybe long calls. So two, three, four months calls out maybe because then I don't have to risk as much on the equity side. You know, I don't have to put in some good equity and then if it bounce, if it crashes another 5, 10, 15%, you know, I, I'm down on that equity if I put in some good capital. I'd actually play it by the calls where if it appreciates, I can take some, I can make some nice, um, I can make some nice premiums off that, right? And so if this gets back into the 14s, I'm going to be looking for a potential call play off of this level here. If you get a blowout and the markets really start to pull back and this crashes below 14, and if this name gets into the 13, 12s, 11s, I'm going to be a good buyer in the 11s because that brings me back down all the way to the financial crisis of 2008. 2008, 15 year lows with a name that gives 7% dividend yield currently. I mean, I don't know why the chart's broken, but sellers have been slamming this. Uh, same thing with Verizon, guys. This, so look at T. AT&T, Verizon, same thing, a little bit better of a chart, a little bit higher performer than AT&T. Um, we are now at six-year lows, not not 12-year lows. So about a six-year cushion ahead there, but same thing. Look, bounced hard in October. These two tr these two names trade very similar, similar to how all you guys would trade your tech names, right? This, tr you know, sort of your, how you trade your Microsoft, how you trade your NVIDIA, those those tr names trade pretty similarly, right? Th these two trades are in this or almost identical price action, right? So back in October, we had a ripper. Now we're back retesting those October 22 lows of $34 a share. Is it surprising to me that it's been ripped off 34s? No, why? Let's go back to the technicals, guys. Back in 2017, in June, we bottomed. We bottomed in 14s and we ripped right, uh, sorry, we bottomed in 34s and we ripped right to the 40s. Same thing though, right? Verizon, what's their dividend yield? It's actually higher than AT&T. It's a 7.55% annual dividend yield. You can do nothing but just buy shares of the company and you immediately make over the year period by holding four full quarters, you hold you make 7.55% in gains, right? That has nothing to do with stock performance. Yes, if you've been buying Verizon the last six years, you're probably right on the position. No problem. You probably bought in the 40s and 50s and you're down 20, 30%. But this is an opportunity down here potentially to go long. How I'd maybe play this is maybe sh maybe shares, uh, maybe some small equity as a starter base. You can always buy on the upside, um, but you can play some longer calls and let it appreciate. These premiums are dirt cheap. Premiums on these names, these names don't move a lot. So it's 18, 20, 22% premiums. Um, really, really cheap. While the VIX is fully suppressed under 16, 15, 14 levels, these calls are going to be the cheapest they're probably ever going to be. Um, so, you know, this is where things are very cheap. As I said, we break this lower band of 34. You got a big gap down all the way to 30, another 10, 12% downside. You get in that zone. Now you're coming back, as I mentioned, down to the 2012, 13 levels. Um, and then under those, I mean, you got a free fall all the way down to the low 20s. Um, but that's why you use stop losses. You always keep things intact. You always manage your capital risk, right? Um, have to use technicals. For me, I use technicals for everything, right? So that is, these are your spots. Uh, keep an eye on your Verizon and AT&T. I wanted to post these because I know folks are looking for longer dividend names, uh, looking for good cheap charts, and these names are getting extremely cheap, uh, especially if you like that yield, right? Let's say the stock lost 7% on the year uh, and you bought it and it lost 7% of share price and you make 7% dividend, you actually break even. 
You continue holding it, you're making 7% a year on the dividend. Stock appreciates 20, 30% in a year. Bang, now you make 27%. You see how those similar calculations would work? So dividend names are pretty important. And especially all you're seeing is large money sort of go into these dividend names, right? You got the Warren Buffetts of the world who are just absolutely you know, value driven and only look for you know cheap discounts, good dividend paying. And you know they've, they've made money for 60, 70 years, 80 years doing this. Um, so keep an eye on the dividend names. They're great payers, great in an environment like this when things become expensive and no one really wants to be all in equities. Dividend names could be a good play. Um, last one, small dividend name is Intel, as you guys know. One of my favorites off 25. Um, and let's talk through technical analysis for all the new people coming here. I want to show you guys a really interesting pattern on Intel because this is good when you're forming larger time frame. Everything you're seeing today, guys, is weekly, basically weekly charts with a few daily charts right? And so let's talk through larger time frames because a lot of folks are so obsessed with the one minute, the three minute, the five minute, and freaking going nuts on these ODTs. That's what sort of the world has come to. But if you take a deep breath and sort of sit back and look at some of these larger time frame moves, they're a little bit less stressful to trade, a little bit easier, not as crazy. Um, and Intel's been a great example. I want to show you guys what a triple bottom formation looks like with a possible head and shoulders reverse up into a new upper band. And I want to talk through Intel because it's literally worked like magic off technicals, all right? So let's look here. We had a blow off, uh, washout, blowout, under the 23, 24s, but that doesn't really count. I count this bottom wick here, which would be about $25 a share. We broke down a major volume, recovered all the way to 30. Broke down again. Sellers brought it back down to 25. We had new buyers and algos pick up shares. Bang, brought it back to 30. Sellers said no. Sellers brought it back to 25. That's a triple bottom. You're now seeing a demand level at $25 a share. You're now seeing a supply level at 30. So this thing moves about 10, 15, 20% before it has its interval retest, right? What happened was on the third test, and this is very similar. In my experience over the years, what I've seen is on the third retest, whether that's a day trade scalp, whether that's a swing trade, whether that's a short going to the downside, whether that's a long going to the upside, that third retest, typically you actually see a blowout and you see a break. And so we, we broke through that third test and we ripped all the way to 33, which if you think about it, guys, you break 30, right? And you go to 33, what, what percentage move is that on equity? That's a 10% equity move. Right? That would equate to hundreds of percentages in an option trade, right? If you're trading options. So that's a big move. And that's on a one week level. That's a 10% move in a week, right? That's pretty impressive. So now we're getting what happened is Intel had a little pullback, but guess what? This thing got really bought up back at 28, 29. So now you're not even seeing it go back to 25 because there's so much demand and people want this stock now at 28, 29. So for me, that may tell me that Intel is fully bottomed between 25 and 29, and now we're going to see a re-up trend and potentially test the upper band. Now, I want I am two target levels on this trade. I, you know, this has been a long trade, long swing idea for about three months now, and it's all technically driven, right? 35 is a cap right here where the selling started down the 25, right? So 35 will be your first overhead resistance, and if you break 35, there's a lot of range. You have 35 to 39. Now, if you're a trader, you'd probably want to be looking to scale out of 35s, maybe set some runners for 39s if you get up there, right? 30, 32, right? This is still a resistance level as well, right? So you'd have to fully formulate a higher low and then bang, you sort of get the blowout in here. So keep an eye on Intel. This is a larger cap name, moves a lot slower. It is absurdly cheap chip name compared to your AI, your, your NVIDIAs, your Microsoft. This name trades like 10 PE. Um, so like... 10, 12 P. I could be wrong on that. It's very cheap P and it is very much hated on the street. So with those combinations, it's ripe for a potential up trade. So keep an eye on Intel. It has been performing as of late pretty well and the volume has been picking up. So keep an eye on that trade. So those are your sort of dividend player names. I Hopefully that's helpful. You guys took some notes. You have Verizon, AT&T, and Intel. Intel's dividend, I think they cut it. It used to be about 3% annual. I think it's now about 0.4. Let me look. It's about uh, 1.6 annual yield. Um, it was much higher. I think it used to be four or five, but the company cut their dividend because they weren't doing well. Hence all this sell pressure in here. Um, so the dividend is now much lower, 1.6% annual yield. Uh, but the stock is very cheap down here. Chart looks broken, I understand. But from a three set pattern here, just to show you guys and walk through price action, like that's a bullish bottoming formation. So if you get back down to 28, 25 a share, 
you know, that's where you could potentially get all pretty bulled up in there from a long perspective, okay? How I look to play this one is maybe some upside calls, 33 calls, 35 calls, multi-months out if the price momentum continues to the upside. I want to get into the China names, topic number three. Let's talk about the China Mega Cap ETF, K-Web, absolutely broken. But is it broken? Same thing. Let's talk through it. Are you a bottom fisher? Are you a bottom feeder? Because this is what a bottom feeder chart is starting to look like from a bullish perspective. You've had sellers absolutely shred this thing from January of 2021. Two full years of absolute decimation over in China on these mega cap names. Decimation. I mean, 10, 12 PEs. Um, these names used to trade 30, 40 PE like the US. Now some are under 10, 7, 8 P. I mean, it's crazy. Some of these names are growing at 20, 30%. Growth, uh, growth clips. Um, you probably saw some of the news over the last week. Why Bob is up over seven, eight percent, right? China is announcing potentially some stimulus. We all saw what happened in the stimulus for the U.S. economy. Stocks boomed, right? So that's sort of a trade idea. People are getting behind. Plus, they're very cheap names. So you know, people are saying you know there's much lower risk there. Obviously, you have the China risk with with Taiwan and policy and all of that, right? You've always had that risk for the past you know three, four, five years. Names at a chart level, but let's go to the technicals. Let's check it out. We had a bottoming back in ha uh, Hang Seng in the 18s. This is KWeb. We had a, this is the KWeb mega uh, mega cap tech ETF, right? For China, be similar to our maybe our you could maybe compare it to like the, their Q, uh, our QQQ, right? Um, so this is down in here. Bottoming in the 17, 18, 19s, we formed a bottom. Then what happened is we formed a double base bottom, higher levels, twenty four dollars a share. Big candle to the upside off that 24th. What happened again? Guess what happened in early June last week? Bottomed at 24. Now people are saying, why did it bottom? Why did it explode last week? Why did it go from 24 all the way to 27 in one week? Why? Let's go back. Let's look at the technicals. Back in December of 2022, we had a huge wick, 24% weekly gains in the K-Web, 24% candle in one week. So 24 has been a magnet. 24 has been a magnet. Guess what happened? We go back to 2022 in May. Magnets, 24 is big, big, big green candles. Look at this one. 28% weekly candle off that level. We just hit that bottom last week. Is this run done? I don't think so. Let's look at the technicals. We're bouncing hard. We formed a higher base. We're now trading above that 17, 18, 19 frame with 24s. I think this can bottom out and reverse, and KWeb could potentially hit $28 to $30 a share um, if these China names continue to get bid. This is the ETF. Let's look at particular China equities that are starting to form bottoms and going up to the upside. I have two names to check out. One, Alibaba. Everyone knows that one. This is basically the Amazon of China doing a ton of spinoffs, which is technically good for investors currently. Name chart looks broken. I know. Bottomed out at 58, bounced hard off 78, 79. It's bounced hard off 78, 79 for almost the past year and a half. No surprise there. Same as the K-Web. Is this now going to swing back to the 90 level? 88, 88 is the next resistance, right? 88 followed by a band at 100. You saw major whale call sleeps come in the week before last, around Thursday, Friday time frame, millions and millions in premiums on the July 90 and the July 100. So there are some big, big bullish bettors on BABA right now. And the price action last week tells you that this run may not be done and it might just be starting. So keep an eye on BABA. That is going to be a top watch over the coming weeks, right? These are bigger time frame moves. This is not a you know an hour move, a five minute move, a day move. I know everyone in our Spud Zone chat Everyone in our Discord trades super quick, super fast paced. But if you sit back, take a breather, check the chart out, you know, some of these moves are a little bit longer time frame. You can maybe have a little bit more leeway, you know, when they yank it, when the when the size in a bit, when they when the pull it, when the scale out, etc. Last China name I want to look at is PDD. Earnings have been pretty good as of late. Uh Pin Duo Duo. This chart actually is not broken. Um, this chart's actually trading above its 2020 highs, which is above $60 a share. Um, from a weekly perspective, last time this was in 60s was December of 2022, and, and that actually went $60 to 106 per share. So there's a lot, what I call a lot of range percentage on a name like this. As a trader, I've been telling you guys for years who have followed, what do we look for as traders? Whether you're a day trader, swing trader, option trader, anything, what do we look for? We look for volatility and range percentage. So we want tickers that are trading a lot of range, right? 
NVIDIA. NVIDIA moves two, three, four percent a day. Great for J trading, great for trading, right? We don't want something that moves a half a percent per week. No one wants that. It's slow, it's moving, it's hard to, you know, no one wants to trade that, right? Um, so we want names that move. PDD is the China name that moves. BABA as well is pretty volatile, right? Uh, these contracts are more expensive than a ticker like Alibaba or a KWeb because of the volatility itself, right? Weekly chart, we had a big hammer green candle up 18% in May, uh, May 26th. Last week, we had a down 2.6%, but we talk about price action, right, guys? Look at this wick. See this long red wick? That means that buyers came in, buyers came in, buyers came in, buyers. It was a buy the dip all week. So now what happens? If the name strong price action comes in next week, what happens to this name? We see a move over 71, 72. We might see a move back up to 75, 77. This would be a sort of bigger time frame move. Where does my chart say? 80 move, right? Here's the next resistance at 80. If the buy side technicals continue to perform, we potentially could see the 80. And with potential blowout, the blowout would be in the 80s, 90s. Keep an eye on this name, PDD. So the China names, these cheap China names that people were bidding, bidding up last week, right? KWeb, Baba. PDD, those are my three names if you're looking for overseas exposure and want to maybe hop on a little bit of scalps for some, some bullish tendencies, right? China hasn't really talked about AI. They haven't really been posting about AI. All AI has been from the US. What happens if these China names that are extremely heavily shorted and have been decimated for three years start to talk about AI or start to show something? You think investors are just going to say, oh, I'm staying in the US? No, these names are going to fly quickly if they have some sort of good AI that can compete with the US. So keep an eye for that maybe news cycle coming. We also have the stimulus news cycle, right? People are getting money in their pockets. They're going to be go spend. So that is China, right? Keep an eye on those three China names. The last and final topic for today. I know I'm speaking very quickly. We have a ton of viewers on. I'm seeing the chat look, looking great. Also, shout out to our tech team. Thanks for posting our Discord and um, all the Q&A stuff in the chat. You guys are awesome. Keep posting that stuff and, and appreciate you guys taking care of any questions. Um, if you guys do love some of the stuff you've learned today, we do have a live Discord chat. You could check us out. We've been in the markets for three or four years, have thousands of testimonials. You could come check us out. Uh, and they've posted the link in the comments section on the right-hand bar. Let's go to topic number four. The last topic is speculative AI, uh, sort of spec plays, um, small cap AIs that have been showing really positive bullish price action. Um, let's look at Palantir. Um, this weekly chart, look at these volume candles, okay? Palantir AI name, market cap. Let me quickly look it up on my phone right next to me. It is market cap. It's a, it's much larger than small spec. I believe it's in the 20s, uh, maybe 26 billion. That was the last time I looked. Uh, let me quickly see. It is market cap is 20, sorry, 30 billion now. It's above. Um, it must have been in the 20s when I looked at it. But let's look at the weekly chart. Technically, I, will, I want to point out three signs here of Palantir on why this is showing bullish momentum and why the technicals are saying this name potentially may not be done. Three things. One, volume candles. Look at these four weeks in a row of street big, big volumes, right? That's always a really good sign when you're looking for a move as a trader. You want major liquidity that you can get in and out of trading, right? Four weeks of low with green bars. That beats everything all the way back until maybe the closest of 2021 back in May. And the stock trading price was about $20 to $23 a share. Okay, but we are at a, we are at a resistance point on Planet, uh, Palantir, PLTR. We are. I'm not, you can't, you can't, you can't discredit that. 1450 has sort of been a top out in the past year and a half. And where did we top out on, on, on last week? We topped out right there. So is it a surprise we topped out there and it didn't continue last week? Yeah, no, it's not a surprise because that's where we were technically. Now, if you get a pullback to... 13s or 12s, and then we start to sort of hold those levels, right? Or even a pullback to 11, 12s. I'd love to maybe take a stab at 11, 12s for maybe a retest of the 14, 15s, and then a blow through. Because what happens is, since all this volume in here, right? There's a highly like probability that if this name continues running, it's going to run pretty hard. Why? Look at this whole range. 1450 all the way to 18s is fully open. 
fully open. See my chart here, my two horizontal lines? Fully open. So you break out of this range and there's nothing stopping this name from filling that gap up to the 18s. And you've seen some big, big call sweepers on this name too. So this is a name that, in my opinion, should be a must watch over the coming days and weeks as well. If that AI trend continues to be hot, this is a name that could continue to punch three, four, five percent daily. Keep an eye on this one. This is the weekly time frame. The resistance breakthrough is 1450s to 1490s. You break through that, you have a major gap to the upside. Keep an eye on this one. Pullbacks, I'm not in this name. I'd love to maybe dabble on this name. If I get maybe a wick down to the 1150s, let me put in a chart here, um, show you guys where 1150s would be. That would be where this run stopped, which would potentially could be, right? which is funny how this works out. This is a perfect, oh, a perfect example for the for, a perfect example for our, all the members and students here. Look at this price action, right? See this wick right here? 1162 had pivoted. Where did the wick, where did the run start last time? 1160, 1150, 1160 right here before it ripped to the 14s. So let's see if that 1160 is gonna be a new support level for this name. If it pulls back, that's where I'd like to get into this name. Um, and it'll create an, a, lo, a higher low, possibly to fill out those 18 calls. You don't want to jump in equity. I get it. No problem. Guess what? You don't have to buy shares to play exposure long in the market, even if you don't think this market should be up. You can always play a little bit on the longer calls. So if the if the market continues going and you're not in the market, at least you could make some a couple bucks going to the upside on just call premiums, right? Um, so that limits your downside risk. You don't have to go, you know, big size in equity. You can always just play very small on some calls, make a couple bucks here and there if the market continues to run, right? We talk through put exposure. A lot of people on the street are putting down some new put exposure while the VIX is suppressed under 14. Your puts are extremely cheap. Market's pricing in basically no drops. So that's why people are buying puts because they're so cheap. Any type of big market move down and those puts become exponentially more expensive. Right, um, so Palantir is another one. Two other spec AI names. Keep these. These are way more small cap though. So keep an eye on these. Two names I've been talking about for three or four weeks. I have no positions in either of them. I'm watching both. QBTS. I want to look at the daily chart and the volume. Uh, as this is ripped from 51 cents all the way to 170, so the price action is pretty strong, up 200% on basically the last eight days, 10 days. Um, now hitting a very key resistance though at 169, 170 back in 2023 in January. If you break out of that, as I said, there's a big trading gap. Over 170s, you can potentially see all the way up into the 240s, 250s. Upper band, uh, sorry, this lower band trend line ends at 270, while this higher band would be about uh, 240s. 240s, 270s if it breaks the 180s. And this is a quant uh, quant uh, computing name, quant AI computing. This had a big acquisition as well. Um, so keep an eye on this name. This is QBTS. This is a small caps, more speculative. But, you know, as I say, price action dictates the markets. This name's dip has been being bought up the last four, four or five days. It's a volatile mover, 10, 15, 20% on the week. So keep an eye on dips. Um, 120s got soaked up on, um, I think it was Wednesday, Thursday last week, and then exploded to um, back to the 160s uh, on Thursday, Friday. So keep an eye on this name. Um, the last name to quickly look at, um, which I believe was all over Fox News. I know nothing about this one, but if we just look at the price action, um, it ripped from $1.60 all the way into to the eight so far. And that's about a 600% interval move. Um, you know, in about, this is a daily chart, keep in mind, this is uh, in about a month's time, less than a month, three, three and a half weeks, this has ripped about 600%. Um, is it overextended? For sure. Is all of AI overextended? For sure. But guess what? This name could continue going higher, but let's look at the technicals. Where can the rally stop and why did it pause at $8 on Friday? Well, guess what? It paused to the penny. Where's my line? To the penny. And keep in mind, I had these lines drawn before they even make the moves. So it's funny how the technicals literally, it's almost like a perfect playbook. Look at this. It stopped at 810, but why did it stop at 810? Because back in 2021, 2020, that's where the selling started from the eights. So that's that's what we call an overhead supply zone. So if this name starts to cool off, although it cooled off in the fives and it looked like a strong buy in the fives, you know, you want to be selling rips in the sevens and eights from the five. So, you know, I missed this rally, but it's a name I continue to watch because it is in that AI spec. It's a low float. It moves quickly. The price action has been incredible over the last 10, 15 days. 
Sometimes you don't need to just focus on the top gainers if you're a small cap trader. You can focus on what's been strong momentum wise because if you're buying dips in the three, four, fives and the stocks at eight, you know, that's a 50% move and you didn't have to do much. You just had to watch the chart. Um, you know, so keep an eye on that name. Eight to eight ten is a big key break. You go to eight eight ten. I don't even have the chart here. Let, let me look. Let me look at the weekly. If you break out of the eight eight ten, which looks extension, look, it's literally vertical. The line is a vertical on the weekly. I mean, there's not even a pullback. <laughs> uh, pretty impressive. Uh, you have a move up to the tens. So comparable to the name I just showed you, QBTS. There seems to be more upside on QBTS than a name like G GSIT, just from a technical standpoint, right? This could continue running, of course. Um, All-time highs is in the tens of GSIT. So technically, if you break the tens, you're in what I call no man's land, which basically means anyone who has short sold this stock from 2007 um, is now red. So that would be about a 2007 all the way to 2016, was it 15 years? 14 years, uh, yeah, no, uh, 13 years, whatever, 13, 14, 15 years. Anyone who's short sold that is now underwater if we break out of the 10s, which in my opinion, that would be a big breakout over the 10s, which would be all-time highs. Um, you know, you'd probably want to keep riding that momentum. But as I said, this is a vertical move. You don't even see a little bit of red pullback. So it is very hot. It may need to come back a bit. If you're looking to buy a dip, I like something maybe in the fives. Um, but that's where it was two weeks ago. And, you know, that was a nice dip buy opportunity. If it gets there again, maybe. Um, so keep an eye on this name, GSIT, fully speculative AI name, fits in that QBTS bucket as well. So those are the three names that I'm looking at from an AI perspective, PLTR, GSIT, QBTS. Now, is there going to be random names that pop 100, 200, 300, 400% on some random AI fluff news? Of course. Um, but you're seeing a lot of traders and investors trying to decipher where they could potentially put speculative capital. And, you know, as we've seen the buy inflows on some of these three names, there's been a lot of volume to the upside. So clearly there's some interest. So, you know, you have to follow the price action. As I always teach new students and traders, price action, you always hear me say it, price action dictates market movement. Short, long, that's that's what makes the market, right? You have to follow the price action. That's where the move is going. Um, don't get left behind. If, you know, if the ship's sinking, Ride the ship short down. If the, the rocket ship's taken off, you can scalp some along the way to the upside, right? Um, so that's how it sort of works. That's how I like to trade. Everything's purely technicals. We went through a lot today. I mashed this session in 48 minutes. Sorry if I spoke too fast. You can have unlimited rewinds. This is a free session for everyone. Whether you are a Spud Zone member or not, you can definitely check out the Discord. The tech team has put the link in the Discord. We have been around for three or four years. We have over 30,000 members in the Discord. Feel free to come check us out. We have a full options team, um, equity traders as well. Come check us out. Um, topics of coverage today, guys, were SPY QQQ ARC for the indexes on topic number one. Topic number two was the long-term, sort of longer mindset, longer, bigger picture time frame moves on your Verizon, your AT&Ts, your Intels, dividend players, right? Uh, cheap dividend names with broken charts, uh, three is your China momentum name. Very sort of choppy trade. Um, wouldn't be on any equity there. I'm looking at potential call exposure going forward. Those seem they're slowly starting the bottom. And then your four is your spec AIs. We've talked through that. PLTR, your GISIT, QBTS. Those are on watch the next couple weeks. And they have been the last three or four weeks. So those are continued multi-trend watches. Um, hopefully this is helpful. Would love some feedback. You guys can throw new new folks who are signing up, new folks who are signing in, watching new viewers. Hit the subscribe button. That helps a lot. Um, and also, if you guys could just write some comments in the YouTube section, anything you'd like to see next time. Um, I try to do these videos three or four weeks, and they are for you guys. I try. I love to coach. I love to teach. This is what I love. I study and breathe markets 20 hours a day. I love this stuff. So anything I, I can help you um, become a better trader, become you know a better thinker, whatever it may be, um, just post in those comments. I'm happy to help out any way I can and, and maybe check some different boxes next uh, next speech so or next stream session, excuse me. Um, I'll keep an eye on that stream for the comments, but we're all done. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for the hundreds of folks who jumped on today. I hope the session was really helpful for you guys. Um, some really great charts out there. Um, it's just you know manage that risk, manage that capital, keep those stop losses tight and um, hopefully everyone's uh, starting to trade well. And if you've missed most of the move like I have, you know there's still opportunities long and short. so, it's going to be some great coming weeks and months, I think, of some really good volatility and range. So, so just be ready. Be ready to trade whatever the market's given you, and um, have a great rest of your Sunday. And I'll see everyone this for uh, everyone this week for a full week uh, of some awesome action pack trading. Cheers! If you're looking to sign up for this Discord or join the join our great community, you can check us out in the links provided on the right hand column in the comment section. 
Appreciate everybody. Spud Zone out.